Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. And we are back with more Formula E Season 1 action. We're coming into the end of the season now. Just three races left and today we're looking at one of those. This race took place in Moscow. A race which probably won't be returning to the calendar anytime soon. And there are very few changes once again. We do lose four drivers. So... After this race, we lose four drivers. This is the final race for Jaime Alguasuari for Virgin. Antonio Felix da Costa, although he will be back in future seasons. Antonio Garcia, who is returning for only his second race as a replacement for Charles Peak, And Vit Antonio Liuzzi, who will not be racing anymore for Trilli after this one we also have justin wilson stepping in for his one and only formula e race for andretti replacing scott speed so they are i guess not changes for this race but future changes so the last race for four drivers and a one and only for another so the grid is a little bit different than usual but otherwise it's pretty much your standard formula e season one grid no big surprises. And with that, let's begin looking at the Moscow round of the Formula E Season 1 2014-2015 Championship. So without further ado, let's get that green light going. So, nothing outrageous on the first lap. We saw an audacious move from Justin Wilson, who's making his presence known early. Nelson Piquet leads the way, helping his championship if he can stay there. And into the left hander. So, as they come across the line, uh, Remy has 59% of uh, energy remaining. So, we'll compare that to the next lap and, and see how well, much he uses. Piquet just lost 7 tenths that lap. Well, because he's right behind Sam Bird and he's trying to get past the Englishman, and now he has managed to do so. So, I don't know whether. Okay, so a big jump from the first lap to the 10th, I think. But absolutely nothing is happening in this race. There is a good battle between Jerome D'Ambrosio and Daniel Apt. Um, D'Ambrosio is in the way past, can't find it yet. Um, and further up, Degrassi is trying to get ahead of jean eric Verne for second. And has also so far failed to find a way through. Other than that, this has been a very tedious race. I say they're battling. There's been a couple of close moments, but really they're just following each other. I don't know what happened to Sam Bird. I don't know if he had some kind of mechanical issue, but he has dropped to the back and has now been lapped by Nelson PK. And we are about a third of the way through this race and hopefully something will happen in it. Garcia coming into turn three, so that's 
Kashwari taking 13th place away. Wasn't really expecting to see overtakes there, but uh, caught sleeping a little bit, didn't he? That was good. And now Bruno Senna is going to be trying to follow through. Antonio thinks the Costa is trying to get up into the top 10 and past Jano Trulli in front of him. So we've got good, good battles going on throughout the order as this queue continues. But as we've seen so often this season, it tends to be. Look at that, Degrassi. Even Degrassi now is. Oh, hey, an overtake. Jaime Aldaswari has passed Antonio Garcia for 14th place. It's something at least. With Antonio Phillips to Costa, right there behind him. Oh, and he's gone to the inside line of the chicane. That's brave stuff from the Costa, and he forces his way through. And then, oh, and then, uh, well, they've been swapping positions for ages, truly, in the Costa. So that might have been after that. Uh, as we go on board with uh, Wilson, okay, okay, that was an old one. So that was the Costa trying to get past truly early on, and then now. Now, has he got past, or did Trulli go straight on the chicane and hold the position? Uh, we'll try and keep an eye out as they come through shot now. But well, they're not exactly feeling too good about each other at this point. It's, uh, yeah, there was a really aggressive place to pass turn seven. And here, they're still going at it. So, De Costa made the move on Trulli. I think Trulli's gone straight over at the chicane and held onto the place, which to me seems a little bit dodge. Yeah, you're probably not allowed to do that. <laughs> I would say, but let's see if he tries it again here. Yeah, let's it's see. He, he tucks right up behind no. the back of the Trulli car. No, I would be surprised if he managed to really train is going to reform. <laughs> and uh, off, we, off we go. But yeah, he's truly been unbelievably defensive. It must get boring just being that defensive all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he's done a personal best in the first set this time around, Yano Trulli, and he's trying to hold on to a uh, vital championship point that would take him level with Nick Heidfeld, although Heidfeld's running a little bit further up the road, so uh, it wouldn't in actual fact. Uh, as they come across the line, lap 15 of 35. You can see from 10th back, the field is just starting to close up. And uh, again, it's ahead of Oyarno, it's all spaced out. So some gaps as big as a, you know, a couple of seconds, there's a three second gap now between PK and, and John Eric Burke. Up towards two, the Costa very dramatically trying to put off Yarno Trilli. The Costa's frustration level is going to be building here, and the moves are going to get more and more outrageous as he feels he's got even a chance to get past, to get away from Yarno and to start to try to close that gap up to Salvador Duran. He's going for it at the chicane again, is he? Antonio Phoenix to Costa looks to the inside line. There's going to be a touch there. Again, Trilli has to get out of it. De Costa just about makes it through, and Trilli's still in the position. <laughs> All right, this battle has been pretty fun. Antonio Felix da Costa is trying to get past Jano Trulli, who seems to be driving very slowly. And every time Antonio Felix da Costa makes a move at the chicane, Trulli just drives straight through it and gets back ahead of him. I really think he should give the place up, but there seems to be no rules regarding this, and he's been allowed to keep the position. I can see Antonio Felix da Costa only getting more and more frustrated. Okay, so things are starting to get interesting. We're about halfway, the pit stops are starting, PK is one of the first ones in. Bruno Senna has spun, damaged his car, but very luckily he's able to continue, and as we're at the halfway stage, he'll be able to switch cars, so it shouldn't really hinder him too much. But he has brought out the yellow flags. Antonio Felix da Costa and Jano Trulli have pitted together. And I think Antonio Felix da Costa's pit crew are going to have to hold him back because I'm sure he wants to punch Yano Trulli square in the face. 
And there is also a good battle for second place. Jean-Eric Verne, Lucas Degrassi and Sebastian Buemi. Three guys who will be big players in Formula E's future are all together on track trying to get second place. So there are some interesting things going into the second half of this race at least. Okay, so we've had the pit stops now, and Degrassi has jumped John Eric Verne for second. Sebastian Buemi got released into the path of Nick Heidfeld, and I'm sure he will get a penalty for that because Formula E loves handing out penalties, and it was an unsafe release. And Antonio Felix da Costa is still chasing Jano Trulli. I'm expecting something to happen in that battle. from Edams. They thought it was 68 seconds, not 58 seconds. Both of their drivers did a 68 second pit stop and have lost 10 seconds. Here's where DaCosta got past Trulli on the run up into two and he's thought, I'm bored of this. Yeah, out of my way. Nice, nice, very nice pass. No Mario Kart shortcut for Trulli there. It's not like Edams to make mistakes. They, no, they are not, they're a championship winning team. So the the do that. Is, there has to be a reason and there you go. Yeah, it's the only one that makes sense because, like we say, there was a man with the watch counting them down. So, well, the grassy is eating into PK's lead here. So three point five seconds. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Isn't it? So Stefan Sarazan gets a penalty for not respecting the minimum pit stop time. I believe it was the Edams team that went too long on their pit stop. They did sixty-eight seconds instead of fifty-eight seconds. So that was a weird tactical mix-up for them. And Antonio Felix da Costa has finally gotten past Yano Trulli. And now it is Justin Wilson's turn to try and get past. But Trulli is up to his old tricks and he's diving through the chicane. I feel like Sam Bird had a really good start to this season and has since just, it's just been a complete disaster for him. He's the only retirement so far in this race and honestly, I can't remember the last good Formula E race in the first season that he had. So it's a case of what could have been for Sam Bird if he just didn't have all this bad luck going against him. Sure when that refers to 
push in the opening lap or so because he actually pitted at the end of lap two. So it must have been very early on in the race as uh, they make their way out now across the line to start lap 30 of 35 here in Moscow. And there is Stefan Sarazan doing some donuts for the crowd. He's lost it on the brakes coming down into the hairpin. Uh, he's in 16th place all by himself. Okay, so Stefan Sarazan spins, but he's well down anyway. Bruno Senna has a drive through penalty for over speeding in the pit lane, but he's way down anyway. Not a lot happening at the front of the field, and still the best action involves Jarno Trulli, Justin Wilson, and Luke Duval chasing him, both trying very hard to get past. It's definitely the best battle of the race. And honestly, I'm surprised Yano truly has held on as long as he has. He has cut through the chicane a number of times, but no one's crashed into him. So he might make it to the end of the race. Just locking up just a little bit on the way in there. Oh, lost another wing. Oh, and that is Yano Trulli's. Yano Trulli's rear wing has gone. And that is at the head. I think someone might have tried to force their way through. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's too bad. Oh, and he's gone on the back of him. Oh, poor Justin lost out too. Well, that's sort of good news for Justin because now he's got both places. But yeah. oh, that was that was a bit unfortunate, really, wasn't it? For Justin. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, truly, honestly, straight line of the chicane like that. So it finally happened. Um, Lloyd Duval missed his breaking by quite a lot actually and very rudely mounted Jarno Trulli taking off Trulli's back wing Justin Wilson kind of got stuck in the middle and managed to continue but sort of had to slow down and he got driven towards the wall um, I don't know if Lloyd Deval got any damage he seemed to stop and then start again but I think that's pretty much put an end to the battle but that has been the highlight of the Moscow E3 So that is the end of the Moscow e Prix. Nelson Piquet wins from Lucas Degrassi. It is a Brazilian 1-2. jean eric Verne did very well to finish in third. And there were points for Justin Wilson, as well as Antonio Felix da Costa at the back. And Daniel Apt and Nick Heifeld both put in good performances as well. This was not the most exciting Formula E race ever. In fact, the majority of it was pretty dull. The... Definite highlight of this race is Jano Trulli firstly holding off Antonio Felix da Costa and then later Justin Wilson and Loic Duval. That ended in contact, but the rate like the battle during the race was very, very entertaining at times. There was not a lot else happening at all. So with that, let's go have a look at the latest scores. So Dams are still in first place with 187 points. Aldi and China Racing are following behind. Dragon have dropped from second to fourth. 
and Andretti joined the top five in place of Virgin. Nelson Piquet Jr. leads the championship into the final weekend, just 17 points ahead of Lucas Degrassi, who has jumped ahead of Sebastian Buemi. Nicholas Prost remains in the top five, with Jerome D'Ambrosio lagging a little bit behind in fifth. So that was the Russian e -Prix. Not the most exciting race in the world, but we do have two more races from the first season of Formula E coming to us from London and I will be covering those within the next couple of weeks. We can finally finish off this first season of Formula E. Unfortunately, the video quality for this one, I couldn't find it with like a good quality picture, so it's pretty rough. And um, hopefully I'll find better quality video for the last two races. But with that, thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel. There'll be more Formula E and general motorsport stuff as well. We have over 600 subscribers now, which I'm very thankful for, and have a good one.